This is an academic who loves what he does, increasing the knowledge of political science as a discipline and greater awareness of the sorts of choices that politicians themselves have to make. And he is fizzing with ideas. The role of governments is rarely to govern, it is to survive. The role of opposition isn't to question, it is to attack. Is it any wonder we all turn away in increasing numbers? There's a role for social sciences in informing, in educating, in criticising, in prodding and probing and energising the broader public. And at a time of mass disaffection and anti-politics, there's been no more important time for a vibrant social science community. The Crick Centre was named after Professor Sir Bernard Crick, set up by Professor Matt Flinders at the University of Sheffield, designed specifically to pick up the original ideas of Bernard Crick, which was that you applied good academic practice and research to the real issues that were affecting people's lives in the real world. And that is about taking risks, it's about setting up the citizens' juries between Sheffield and Southampton. Uh, it's about the work with the Select Committee and the parliamentary input that the Crick Centre, led by Matt, has actually been uh, innovating and has really set a, a new pattern of trying to ensure that what we're doing in terms of teaching, in terms of research, actually has some impact on the world outside. I like building teams of academics with teams of practitioners in ways that build bridges and links that wouldn't otherwise take place. Working with the ESRC, working with the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology, we have a whole raft of fellowships now that allow particularly early career researchers to have secondments and placements within the Palace of Westminster. Right, uh, we'll go straight to the questions and could I start by asking you to provide the committee with a brief statement of your views on the current state of democratic engagement in the UK. Matt has been a special advisor to the Select Committee on Citizenship and Civic Engagement, of which I was a member in the House of Lords. He played a very important role in encouraging early career researchers, younger researchers and so forth, who probably would not, never have thought of giving evidence to a select committee like this. And that enriched our committee, but I think it was very important for those academics as well. But we need to give young people the understanding of how the system works, how to engage with it and, and how a democracy works. One of the things we did with Matt at the Crick Centre was create free graphic animation cartoons to try and get his and colleagues' research out into the public light. We ended up getting incredible engagement from it. I can't remember the exact figures, but it was over half a million in youth engagement around specifically his research and the research of other academics. He's acted as an advisor to the House on the Restoration and Renewal project. Matthew has written a book called In Defence of Politicians, and I think there's, if I remember rightly, almost a subheading in spite of themselves. I've heard his radio series. Well, here's the first in a three-part series presented as a personal viewpoint by Matthew Flinders. What's the first word that pops into your head when you think about politicians? Corrupt. The rubbish. Not one I could repeat on the radio. Uh, so I've just finished my undergraduate degree with Matt Flinders at the University of Sheffield. In a normal course, you just submit essays, but in, in, Matt, in Matt Flinders' course in parliamentary studies, we were able to really you know, engage with policy by submitting evidence to select committees. Uh, mine was published and then re my name was referenced within the report. I think 22 out of 40 within the classroom had their submission of evidence published. And I don't think that I would have been able to do that without the support I got from, from Matt. I think one of the challenges is to make sure that we broaden out understandings of impact so that anybody, irrespective of their discipline or their specialism, can understand how they can be located. There's a whole raft of opportunities and we need a broader range of academics who can situate themselves, frame their research, tell their stories in a vibrant, audacious, really ambitious manner.